Hey guys, what's up? Hope everyone's doing well out there. I hope you're having a great day. We are still looking at incident eight of Amber's testimony and what was said. Australia incident, what Amber likes to call not, what I like to call not a hostage, what Amber likes to call a three day hostage situation. Andy has broken it down. Andy from the UK. Again, Andy, thank you so much for putting this together and allowing a few of us to showcase your hard work. There is a playlist. I'm going to pop it up right here for you guys. If you have not started from the beginning, I suggest you do just because it all just kind of flows nicely of how Andy uncovered the whole thing. But let's get into this one. Incident eight, no longer a hostage. Evidence seen in the reflections of the two bathroom mirrors that Ms. Heard photographed in Australia on March 8th, 2015, proved that she was up and active throughout the entirety of that night. However, Ms. Heard testified in both the UK and Fairfax cases that she had locked and barricaded herself in her bedroom and that she slept for about 12 hours until around mil- midday and that it was while she slept that Mr. Depp had written the graffiti on the mirrors using blood, lipstick, and black paint. The most pertinent of Ms. Heard's testimonies is her early declaration in the Fairfax case given on 10th of April 2019, where she explains that having been barricaded in her bedroom all night, she was only able to take a few photographs of the damage, including those of the mirrors in the adjoining bathroom. She said, I was only able to capture a few pictures of these messages because I had barricaded myself in my bedroom, even though they had been spread all over the house. Attached here too, as Exhibit 7, are true and correct pictures of messages Johnny had smeared in his blood and paint in the bathroom adjoining the bedroom I had barricaded myself in. During Mr. Depp's cross-examination on day three of the UK trial, Ms. Wass further confirmed that Ms. Heard barricaded had totally prevented Mr. Depp from getting into the bedroom. So Ms. Wass questioned, and she stayed upstairs and barricaded herself in the bedroom so that you could not get into the bedroom. She pushed furniture against the bedroom door. Ms. Heard was sitting in the public gallery during the day three of the trial and would therefore have heard all of Mr. Depp's cross-examination. The fatal flaw in Ms. Heard's testimony is that the only access to the ensuite bathroom was through the bedroom. In short, Mr. Depp could not have written the graffiti on the bathroom mirrors had Ms. Heard indeed been in the bedroom all night had and had she prevented him from accessing the bedroom as she had testified. Clearly, Ms. Heard had not had properly thought through her concocted story, and nor would such a crucial flaw in her testimony have been apparent to her as she was never barricaded or asleep in that bedroom. However, Ms. Heard appears to have realized the flaw in her previous testimony and has changed her story during cross-examination on day 16 of the Fairfax trial, now claiming that even while she was barricaded in her bedroom, Mr. Depp still had access through the balcony doors. Using further photographs provided to the court by Mr. Ben King, this analysis looks to better establish the time and order of all the various photographs taken inside the bathroom and thereby to better establish the whereabouts, movements, and actions of Ms. Heard during that night. Who took the photos? In her sixth statement, July 4th, 2020, in the UK trial, Ms. Heard testified to having taken the following three photos of graffiti written on the two mirrors in the ensuite bathroom. During the Fairfax trial, Mr. Ben King provided two parties, the two parties further photos of the damage to the property that he took during that afternoon of the 8th of May, to, oh sorry, 8th of March, that's a mistake, it's March 2015, including amongst those photos were the below two photos of the same two mirrors in the ensuite bathroom. This is what Ben King took. When did Ms. Heard take the three mirror photos? In her first witness statements, Ms. Heard testified that she took the three mirror photos at some point later after she had woken from a long sleep and gone back downstairs. She said, I came back downstairs and it was daytime. I had slept for a long time. I noticed he had painted on a lampshade and on a sofa and on the wall and mirrors, all in red and dark colors. At some point later, I took some photos. During re-examination of day 13 of the UK trial, Ms. Heard testified that she returned downstairs at around noon after having slept for an estimated 12 hours. She said, I'm sorry, the phone incident happened in the early hours of the morning. I discovered him downstairs and he said we should call security at around, I think noon is my best recollection. So the question was, so up to 12 hours on your estimate, yes? Amber, yes. During her examination on day 16 of the Fairfax trial, Ms. Heard further testified that for the entirety of the duration until security arrived, she did not return to the top floor where her bedroom was located after having gone downstairs. 
She said, I don't. I still don't recall which of us called Jerry Judge his security. Um, at some point, we went upstairs. He came upstairs, but he went up to the third floor while I was on the main floor, the entry-level floor. I went to make him a cup of coffee because he was demanding more Red Bull, and I was thinking that's probably not a good idea. I don't know why coffee would be so much better, but in my head, it was, oh, I thought maybe, I don't know, it would sober him up. I don't know. Help was coming. I remember I made him coffee. As soon as I handed it to him, he threw it at the TV and started screaming again. It was like back to back, square one. Shortly after that, security arrived. Whatever act that Miss Heard will now accuse Mr. Depp of having carried out during his trip upstairs, he will have completed in the time it took Miss Heard to make a cup of coffee. Contrarily, in her first witness statement in the UK trial, Ms. Heard made no mention of Mr. Depp returning upstairs. In fact, her testimony was that both she and Mr. Depp remained together until security arrived, having only ventured to the kitchen and living area in that time. We know from NGN's closing submissions, July 27th, 2020, that Mr. Connolly sent a text out 12.20 p.m. saying that he was four minutes away from the property. And we know from Mr. Connolly's testimony in both UK and Fairfax trials that he had taken Mr. Depp outside of the property about five minutes after his arrival, then he left with Mr. Depp in the next half hour. Hence, as Miss Heard had not returned to her bedroom after going downstairs, she would necessarily have taken three photos at some point after 12.30 p.m. and after Mr. Depp had left the premises with Mr. Connolly. On what device did Miss Heard take her three photos? Under cross-examination on day 11 of the UK trial, Ms. Heard testified that she had lost her phone when Mr. Depp set it to start recording and then threw it down and that she did not find it again until the next day. This is what she said. I remember him picking up the phone and saying he was going to record. I thought he threw it, but maybe he just threw it down. I can't recall. It was sitting out on the floor or the table at some point. Ms. Laws, when did you first discover your phone then? After Mr. Depp had left? Miss Heard, I think sometime the next day, I believe. They gave me some medications and I slept. We know from Miss Heard's cross examination on day 11 of the UK trial that recording just before Mr. Depp left the premises with Mr. Connolly. So the question was if you look at page, da, 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 this is the audio that captures Mr. Depp because we can see JD there. Do you see that? Amber, yeah. And then there comes a point fairly early on where you don't hear him anymore. He has been taken off. Is that right? Amber, yes. And we know that Mr. Connolly arrived at the property around 1225 and that he escorted Mr. Depp outside approximately five minutes later. This would necessarily mean that Miss Heard lost her iPhone at around 1225 p.m. And hence, as the three photos were allegedly taken at some point after that time, Miss Heard could not have taken the photos with her lost iPhone and therefore, by her own testimony, could have only taken them using her iPad, which she testified to having with her in Australia. Caught in a web of lies. It would seem that Miss Heard was unaware that one of the mirror photos she gave into evidence in the UK trial came with XF metadata showing the, to it to have been taken around 2.55 a.m. on March 8th. The metadata makes it a complete lie of Miss Heard's testimony that she took the photos at some point after 12.30 p.m. that day. The metadata also establishes that the blood, paint, and lipstick graffiti had already, already been written on the bedroom mirror, or sorry, bathroom mirror by 2.59 a.m., and further, proof, and further gives proof that Miss Heard was up and active during the night and not locked and barricaded in her bedroom in a deep sleep. In the UK trial, Miss Heard also introduced into evidence a photo, a lampshade covered in graffiti. And in the Fairfax trial, Mr. King provided a similar photo of the same lampshade. The UK photo came with metadata showing it to have been taken at 12.52 on March 8th. This was a time after Miss Heard had allegedly lost her iPhone and well before Mr. King's arrival at the property. The photo could therefore only have been taken by Miss Heard using her iPad, as she had by then lost her iPhone, which according to Miss Laws, had continued recording for five hours. Miss Heard's cross-examination of the UK trial July 21st, 2015, 2019. Question. This goes on for quite some time. We can see it there very long on the first page. If that's nearly five hours long, Amber, yes. If, however, Miss Heard did indeed take the photo using her iPhone, then the five hour recording must have been taken using her iPad. And this would again make a total lie of Miss Heard's evidence. 
Hopefully more detailed metadata for the lampshade photos will be shown during the Fairfax trial that will fully expose Ms. Hurd's lies and perjury. Was the lipstick graffiti written before the paint graffiti? I'm going to say no without even reading this. The below enlargement of a section of photo 50 proves that the red lipstick graffiti was added after Mr. Depp had written the graffiti in black paint. It can clearly be seen that each stroke of lipstick, shown by the yellow arrows, first partially covers the black writing below, then smudges the black paint in an arc shape in the same direction as the stroke. In some cases, the black writing is smudged well beyond its original location. And the letter L encircled can clearly be seen to cover over the black paint below. Who wrote the lipstick graffiti? In the corner of photo 50 is a small tray can be seen in which there is a piece of white tissue paper. The tissue paper is partially covered in similar shade of red of that is the lipstick graffiti. Most notably, however, there was no black paint on the tissue. The, and resting by the sink in the photo 1831 is another piece of white tissue paper also partially covered by what appears to be red lipstick. Again, there is no black paint on the tissue paper or indeed on the sink countertop nearby. The red is seen on both tissues is too dark to have been blood, which would have been faded significantly in the time before the photos were taken, as can be seen in the mirror photo of photo 50. On the countertop in photo 1831, there is also a cylindrical, ob cylindrical object of exactly the same shade of red as seen on the tissue nearby. The object appears to be what was used to draw the lipstick graffiti. We have already established that the lipstick graffiti was written after and on top of the graffiti that Mr. Depp wrote in black paint, and we know from Mr. Depp's testimony that he resorted to using the black paint only once his finger stopped bleeding. Hence, the tissues had been used by Mr. Depp to wipe lipstick from his hands or elsewhere, then both tissues would, ne would necessarily have also been covered in black paint. This gives proof that, therefore, that it could only have been Ms. Hurd who wrote the lipstick and then therefore used tissues to wipe her hands. Who added more lipstick graffiti? In addition to Miss Hurd's bikini bottoms having been the first spread and then later folded on the towel rail, part of the lipstick graffiti had also been overwritten between the two photos, as is shown and circled in the, magnif in the magnified images below. So you can see here this S and this S. They're the same S, but they're, one of these things is not like the other, and here too. As it is Ms. Hurd's testimony that she took all three photos at some point later, and as we have already established that if so, she took the photos after Mr. Depp had left the premises, then only she could have overwritten the lipstick graffiti between taking the two photos. The photos further prove that the red lipstick graffiti was written after and on top of the black paint graffiti. Did Ms. Hurd take the mirror photos at night? We know already from the metadata that photo 53 was taken at 2.59 a.m. in the morning of March 8, 2015. We also know from the added lipstick graffiti that photos 50 was taken after photo 53. However, we do not have metadata for photos 49 and 50, and hence we do not know if 59 was taken before or after the other two photos, nor do we know how long after taking photo 3, 53 did miss her take number 50. The towel seen on the towel rail in photo 49 and the bikini bottoms seen on the same rail in photos 53 and 50 suggest that Ms. Hurd first took photo 49, after which she had changed into bikini and went for a dip and then took a shower and then used the towels to dry herself off. This is further supported by the appearance of a shower mat and the additional loop of the shower hose seen in the later two photos. Mr. King's photograph of the bloodied, blooded mirror does not show significant sufficient of the towel rail to determine whether the towels or the bikini or neither was still hanging on the rail. Similarly, there is not a sufficient amount of the shower hose exposed to determine if it had looped around once or twice, though the tightness of the upper loop suggests twice. However, the additional smudges and markings of black paint established that Ms. Hurd's photographs of the same mirror were both taken before Mr. Ting, Mr. King took his photo. This fact further narrows the window in which Ms. Hurd could have taken the mirror photos before being cleaned by Mr. King if, as she testified, they were all taken at some point later. There is some possible evidence that the dark towels were no longer on the towel rail at the time Mr. King took the adjacent photograph. Although heavily obscured by the mirror graffiti, there appears to be a towel or linen box at the end of the bath with towels or similar on either side, 
all of which were the same dark color as those seen on the towel rail. If indeed those items are the towels previously seen hanging on the towel rail, then it is very likely that Miss Hurd's photo in which they were seen was the first of three photos that she took. Unfortunately, no metadata was included with the two mirror photos provided by Mr. King, but from his testimony, we know that Mr. King arrived at the property between 2 and 2.30 p.m. and that he had remained there for around 12 hours performing a cleanup. However, the reflection in the mirror above shows a window with bright daylight outside, and it would have been reasonable to assume that both, both Mr. King's photos were taken at a similar time and obviously ahead of when they were both cleaned. So I'm just going to go back up. It's daylight, you can see right there. It's daylight. However, there was further evidence given in photo 1830 that proves it would also have been taken during the daytime. As can be seen from the photo, there is no obvious source of light from the ceiling and no shadows cast that would indicate such. Yet, bright reflections of light can be seen on the vertical chrome film fitments and along the vertical edges of the glass panels. The only possible light source of those reflections is from sunlight through the bathroom window. And there was a further bright reflection of light at the, bath, at the bottom of the mirror that might emanate from the window or through the door from the bedroom. The significance of these reflections is not only that they prove photo 1830 to have been taken during daylight hours, but they also prove that three photos taken by Ms. Heard to have been taken at night. The first, the first of the below three photos shows bright wall lighting and also reflections on the marble wall of the opposite wall lighting as well as the ceiling lights. The second photo shows only ceiling lighting and the third shows the reflection of the ceiling lights on the marble wall. In summary, the ceiling lights were turned on in all three photos and the wall lighting was turned on in the first photo also. Shadows of the, sh of the shower panel can also be seen cast from the ceiling lights in both the second and third photos. These shadows are not seen in photo 1830, giving further proof that they were no lights turned on at the time that the photo was taken. The below magnified images are of the shower unit and nearby glass panels for each of Miss Hurd's three photographs. Despite the amount of lighting in the bathroom, the vertical reflections of light seen in Mr. King's photo cannot be seen in any of Miss Hurd's photos proving that the light source of the vertical reflections was not caused by the interior lighting and therefore, and thereby giving further proof that the source of those reflections was sunlight and hence that Miss Heard took all the photos at night. The mattress, and this he is just speculating here. Mr. King also provided two photos, each showing a stained mattress in two separate bedrooms. Miss Heard describes the first photo as one of the guest bedrooms with Johnny's iPad on the bed and blood and or paint on the duvet cover, but she describes the second photo only as a different bed with more blood on it. She avoids saying which room the different bed is in. We know from the photos and from Miss Hurd's testimony that there may be black paint on the duvet cover in the first photo, but that there was only blood seen on the bed in the second photo. We know from the mirror photos that Mr. Depp first wrote graffiti on the bathroom mirror using blood using his finger, and only when it stopped bleeding did he then stick his finger in black paint and continue to write graffiti on the mirror. We also know for certain that before getting into the bathroom, Mr. Depp would necessarily have walked through the master bedroom, hence there is a reasonable likelihood that the bed in the second photo in which there is blood but not black paint is the bed in the master bedroom. The bed, however, appears to be sitting on top of a light-colored carpet, not the darker wooden flooring we see in the photograph of the master bedroom shown in the next section of this document. If, however, it should transpire that the second photo is indeed the bed in the master bedroom, then it must be the case that Miss Heard was never in the bedroom, she claimed, or that Mr. Depp was in bed with her prior to him going to the bathroom. He could not have gone, got on the bed after leaving the bathroom as his finger had by then stopped bleeding and his hand would have been covered in black paint. Setting the stage. As described in the opening of this analysis, Ms. Hurd's testimony in the UK trial, as well as that of NGN, was categorically that Mr. Depp was prevented, was prevented from accessing the master bedroom throughout the night while Ms. Hurd slept after having locked and barricaded herself inside. However, floor plans of the property given into evidence during the Fairfax trial showed that there was no access to the ensuite bathroom other than through the bedroom, and that the only access to the bedroom is through the main door or through the balcony doors. Hence, Ms. Hurd's testimony being barricaded and locked in her bedroom is hence fully debunked. 
However, during her examination of day 16 in the Fairfax trial, Ms. Heard gave testimony of the events of that night previous to her alleged assault, in which sought to resolve the conundrum by radically changing her story of the events during those three days in Australia. In her testimony, Ms. Heard made no mention of being held hostage and claimed only a vague memory of what of which night she had barricaded herself inside her bedroom, adding further that Mr. Depp could, in any case, still gain access through the patio doors. Okay, I'm just going to stop right there. She had no choice. They ripped this apart in the UK trial. She could have left through the, the, the sliding glass doors. She had access to leave. She had her phone. She could have called someone. She could have called Muskie. She could have called security. There was security um, roaming the property as well. They had like on-site prop, like property security. Yeah, they debunked it. So she was very careful not to say it was a three-day hostage situation because that causes her huge issues after it was already uh, cut apart in the UK trial. She said, I stormed off. I slammed the door upstairs. I don't know if it was in that instance or if it was in a later one that I eventually barricaded the door. Um, you know, it couldn't, it wouldn't stop him from coming in. He could come in the other doors. You know, there's plenty of the back doors, the patio, but at least I'd hear it. Why didn't you leave through those doors? Miss Heard feigned further memory loss when recalling the events following her alleged violent essay, claiming only that she did not now remember much of what had happened after being assaulted, other than taking sleeping pills and awakening the next day. She said, um, I got up at some point. I don't know how that night ended. I don't remember what happened. I don't remember. I have a memory of him begging me not to leave. I remember going outside the front door. I remember him coming out to the front area, but I don't remember if that was before or after this. I don't remember. I just have that memory. I remember taking a bunch of sleeping pills, not a bunch, just two, which is a lot for me. I remember falling asleep or I don't remember falling asleep, but I know I fell asleep because I woke up the next day. Um, I assumed it was late morning. You know exactly what time you woke up. You don't know what time you woke up when you first woke up, but when you look at the clock, you realize what time you woke up. You fucking numpty. Anyway. Yet only two years earlier, Miss Heard had given testimony in the UK trial of how she was locked and barricaded all night inside her bedroom in fear for her life. The extent of this testimony is given in Appendix 2. Miss Heard's Fairfax testimony now sets stage for Mr. Depp to have gained entry into the bedroom through the patio doors while she slept deeply on the night of her alleged essay after having taken two sleeping pills. Yet Miss Heard gives no reason as to why, having barricaded the bedroom door, she would not also have locked the patio doors. I forgot those doors lock. Obstacles to the new narrative. There were many evidential obstacles for Miss Heard to overcome in her newly adjusted narrative that she believes will counter any new evidence or shortfalls in her previous testimony. For Miss Heard to testify that she was asleep while Mr. Depp snuck in through the patio doors and then wrote the graffiti on the bathroom mirrors, she would first need to explain away her earlier testimony in both UK and Fairfax cases, where she testified that she had prevented Mr. Depp from accessing the bedroom throughout that night. Then she would have to explain as to why she left the patio doors unlocked, having previously locked and barricaded the main bedroom door, and having done so in fear that Mr. Depp would take her life should, she gain access, should he gain access to the bedroom. In support of her claim that she was held hostage, Miss Heard testified in the UK trial that she was not aware that there were outside stairs from her balcony. She may well in the hell use that same excuse as the reason why she did not lock the patio doors. However, the floor, the floor plan shows that the two other bedrooms share the same balcony, and hence Miss Heard would have known that Mr. Depp had access to her balcony from those bedrooms. There was also Miss Heard's testimony in day 13 of the UK trial that she saw potatoes and gravy rubbed all over the bedroom door after she first opened the door that morning. She said, when I first opened the door that, that last morning, there was what appeared to be mashed potatoes and gravy or something rubbed all over the door. I would barricaded myself in that night. <laughs> Yet Miss Heard gave no testimony of potatoes and gravy rubbed all over the patio doors, nor indeed of any blood on or near the patio doors or across the carpet from the patio doors, or indeed any of the black paint on the patio door handles as Mr. Depp left the bedroom. 
Ms. Hurd would need to further testify that it was Mr. Depp and not her who used the iPhone to take photo 53, for which the metadata shows the time of 2.59 a.m., and explain how he managed to take the photograph while standing in almost the identical position in which Ms. Hurd stood when she took the photo of the same mirror at some point later. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to interject. He would also have to make sure he was not in the photo, because she made damn sure to keep her own ass out of those pictures. Depp would wouldn't have fucking cared. He wouldn't have fucking cared. I'm sorry. This analysis has proven that all three of Ms. Hurd's photographs were taken at night and not only some point later after she had gone downstairs at around midday. So Ms. Hurd would need to explain how she took any photos during the day and also whilst her iPhone was lost. And she would also need to explain how she managed to take, fo- take the photograph of the graffiti lampshade at 12.52 p.m. having testified that she lost her iPhone around 12.30 Ms. Hurd will likely also testify that the additional black smudges and markings seen on Mr. King's photo, but not seen in her photos of the same mirror, were caused by Mr. Depp when she alleges that he returned upstairs that same morning. However, this would still not be possible within Ms. Hurd's new narrative, as she testified also that she did not return upstairs in the time before security arrived, and that her photos were taken at some point later. Hence, by her own testimony, she took the photos after Mr. Depp had left the premises. <laughs> so evidence supports only the fact that Ms. Hurd was up and active throughout the night and that it was her who wrote the lipstick graffiti on the mirrors and very likely some point of the pink graffiti also. And Ms. <laughs> I'm sorry. And Ms. Hurd's extreme lies of events of the night give further proof of the extent to which she has listed in respect of all the events over the three days that she was in in Australia. Hmm. This is what she said in statement one of December 15th of 2019. Day three. I came back downstairs and it was daytime. I had slept for a long time. Music was blaring, but I didn't see Johnny. Everything was broken and shattered. I noticed he had painted on a lampshade and on a sofa and on a wall in mirrors, all in red and dark colors. I saw something painted on the wall on the bottom of the stairs. It looked like a word, but I didn't understand it, at least at first. I later realized that there, it was red blood. At some point later, I took some photographs, which I exhibit at AH1, pages 14 to 17. She said, I was looking around for Johnny. I remember walking through the art space set up where I'd been painting him a portrait for his birthday. Okay, I'm sorry. She had just gotten there. She had just arrived like two days before. How the hell does she have time to set up an art space and paint him? She is not Picasso. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is her just trying to merge into being Johnny. This, This is her just, you know... becoming whoever he needed her to be. Fuck, it's so irritating. Anyway, where I had been painting him a portrait for his birthday, but he wasn't there. I found him in the office downstairs. He was holding a Jack Daniels bottle with very little in it. I asked where he got it. His hand was covered in red and there was black and blue paint everywhere. He had been writing on the walls and furniture. There was so much red on him. At first I thought it was my blood. And then I thought, had I bled that much? My feet and arms were very bloody. He held up his finger and said, look what you made me do. He was covered in blood and paint and I could see the bone. It was, I was really worried about how much blood he could have lost from his finger. He had been alone and bleeding for so long while I was asleep and I was worried about losing him. I convinced him to call security. Uh Uh-uh, honey, you call security. You have their numbers. You call security. You call triple zero. You call someone. I asked what he'd been doing while I'd been upstairs. He had, he had written me a goodbye note from my other boyfriends to see listing names of all these men I had worked with so that they can, so they can frame them and something about my ambition that maybe the messages will help them somehow. He was taunting me about his finger. This isn't good enough for you. We started to walk out. He kept taunting me. Is this good enough for you? This is how much I fucking love you. This is what a fucking idiot I am for loving you. I kept asking if he was okay and telling him to stop. He got more paint. At some point, we got into the kitchen where we were surrounded by broken glass. He said he wanted a Red Bull, and I said I would make him a coffee. There was more argument, but he calmed down a bit after I made the coffee while we waited for security to arrive. At some point, we sat down with the coffee in the living area. I thought he was calming down, but he threw his coffee cup at the TV so hard that it went straight through the TV. Somehow, the glass table got broken as well. 
Was that you, Amber? Somehow? You sound like a five-year-old. Well, somehow it got broken. After I, you know, after I broke it, it somehow it got broken. Though that could have been the night, that could have been before we sat down. He got nasty again and he wasn't making any sense. He thought I had a guy over the night before. It was so crazy. I was crying. At some point, he took my phone and pressed record. You were crying? Oh, dear. Poor, poor flower. I remember seeing security finally rush in. This was the first time I had seen other people for three days. They asked me what had happened. I told them about Johnny's finger. I had only seen that his finger had been cut off that morning when he held it up to my face. I didn't actually see the finger being cut off, but I was worried that it happened the night before. I figured it might have happened when he was smashing the phone on the wall by the fridge. Her story shifts and changes, and whoever she's talking to, she'll make the story, you know, convincing. So this is Appendix 2, Testimony of Locking and Barricading the Door. This was in her declaration of the Fairfax trial. I was only able to capture a few pictures of the messages because I'd barricaded myself in my bedroom, even though they had been sprayed all over the house. Attached here to Exhibit 7 are true and correct copies um, of the pictures of messages Johnny had smeared in his blood and paint in the bathroom adjoining the bedroom I'd barricaded myself in. Her witness statement, number one. 15th of December, sorry, yet yeah, 15th of December, 2019. I made it upstairs. At some point, I was in the bathroom throwing up repeatedly. I was retching. It was uncontrollable. I took sleeping pills that Dr. Kipper had provided to put myself to sleep. I locked myself in the bedroom and managed to somehow sleep. It could have been for a long time. I slept very late. Her reamended defense of March 6, 2020. Once Miss Heard had managed to escape from the claimant, she barricaded herself in a bedroom. Miss Wass. Step cross-examination, day three of the UK trial. Question, and she stayed upstairs and barricaded herself in the bedroom so that you could not get into the bedroom. She pushed furniture against the bedroom door. Miss Heard at day, thir- day 11 of the UK trial. And Justice Nickel. Just a minute. Who took the photographs of 49 and 50? And the answer is, you did? Amber, yes, they were in the bathroom of the room that I was in. So then it says, can I go, can I go to actually what you say happened? If we go straight to paragraph 102, three day hostage situation, you were there for three days on your own. Essentially, you were trapped in a violent situation with a multiple of incidents of serious violence. That is right. As a summary of what your allegation is, is not Amber. Yeah. So in Justice Nickel, like just like threw that all in. After learning that it was not three days, after learning that there was no such way that she could have been an actual hostage. He just agrees with her. Miss Laws, you have described this incident as as a three-day hostage situation, at one point barricading yourself in the bedroom. Amber, yes. Miss Heard, day 13 of the UK trial. When I first opened the door that last morning, there was what appeared to be mashed potatoes and gravy or something rubbed all over the door. I had barricaded myself on the inside. So all this time she's saying she barricaded herself, she barricaded herself. There's no fucking way she did. She moved furniture you're kidding me. She moved furniture. She moved a chair possibly, but she's making it sound like she moved all the furniture, like the dressers and this and that, and didn't lock the the back door. There was, I'm going to remind, there was security patrolling the property. Johnny needed security on the property to keep the crazies away. So don't tell me you haven't seen people in three days. And there's also the fact that the chef was there. They spoke to Dr. Kipper like the day before on the 7th. Like they've seen people. Like, come on, Amber. Anyway, we will go on to like kind of wrapping it up and going into the other incidences that Andy has so kindly provided us a breakdown for. So on that note, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Take care.